everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Screen Chronicles. I'm Steve. With me, as always, is Colby. Uh, today, you may notice we have a special guest on today. If you're a fan of our podcast, you'll likely know our guest as Abba, the Dane you never fight. He started alongside Hugh Jackman and Taron Edgerton and Eddie the Eagle, as well as alongside Brie Larson, Samuel Jackson, and Jude Law in the blockbuster MCU hit Captain Marvel. Today, we welcome Rune Tempte onto the Screen Chronicles. Hi, guys. Hey, welcome, Rune. It's, it's nice and to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. What an introduction. Have I been in all that stuff? Hey, <laughs> you have. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you've been a lot of great stuff. Yeah, yeah totally. Well, th thank you for um, following me and, uh, of course, running this great podcast from uh, The Last Kingdom. That's fantastic work, guys. Well, thank thank you. you very much. We appreciate it. So, so how are you doing? Yeah, you know, what can I say? Pretty good. Uh, up in the north, up in Norway. Um, you know, uh, things are okay now. It's kind of stable, you know, in this uh, catastrophe running all around the world. It's a, it's a small comfort uh, because so many people are suffering. But uh, we're okay. My family is good. Uh, good. Obviously, uh, when it comes to acting, it's like, um, you know, a bit slow. But uh, things are picking up and soon we'll start to travel again. How are you guys? Good? Yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah, um, it, it gives us an opportunity to, to kind of do our podcast thing. So um, sure. we, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to come on and talk with us. So what kind of things do you do during the day to keep yourself busy? Yeah, but you know, like I've um, uh, been acting for 30 years, like a freelance actor. And, you know, it took me uh, <laughs> a while to get to the level I am now. But in the old days, I mean, there was always some periods in life you didn't work at all. So you you know you work on your own stuff you you prepare uh you do other things you know um mm -hmm. but for the last i don't know 15 20 years it's like 15 years at least i i never did another job uh like for money but of course when you have a house and a garden and a and a kid and a, and a wife there's always something to do <laughs> oh i bet i bet <laughs> totally um, so did you have to work other jobs before your career kind of took off? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the beginning, we, uh, like, but this is like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm growing up now. So this is like 30, 30 old years ago. But um, it's like in America, you have actors, you have uh, working actors, and you have movie stars, you know. So, you know, the actors have to do yeah. other jobs as well. What kind of other jobs did you do? You know, I did landscaping. So that's pretty cool. You can, because mm -hmm. uh, you're outside, you do gardening, you do things, you know, green fingers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, that's cool. And um, I did all, all kinds of stuff, you know, whatever picks up cash so you can do your dream. So, you know, just getting cash in. I did some carpet, uh, carpentering. So that's oh, nice. Yeah, these days, you know, it's, you get some stopped around the house but you know i don't know if you read my resume but uh, no no of course you have so i used to play professional uh, football yeah. in norway mm -hmm. as you know so basically that was my occupation so when i was younger i played for uh, one of the big clubs here in norway and um, that was before the acting but uh, still it was still a dream when i was um, doing my uh, my my football you say football or soccer where are you from we say soccer here. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. we know, we understand, um, cause we obviously yeah. we have the other football. Exactly. So some people get confused, but, um, the, 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 the real shit. Yeah. Well, no, I, mean, I never yeah. got, I, I, I played American football. I never yeah. got why we call it football though. Cause you don't really use your feet as much as in soccer. One guy does, right. As, the yeah, one, yeah. The kicker one player every now and then. Exactly. I never got that. I honestly, I always wondered that myself. So but it depends who was first in a way, maybe. I don't know. Who's, I guess. Yeah, I, I really don't know who. How did you get from then football into acting? What made that transition? Probably thought I was uh, the guy cracking all the jokes in the, uh, in the cloakroom or in the restrooms. And I thought, okay, let's make a living out of that. But uh, it was a long journey from, from that, realizing that getting into acting was really a big thing in that. To be actually on on a stage and in front of a camera is, is something else than cracking jo jokes among your friends. So, 
but it was a long journey. But uh, I think basically I want to tell stories. Okay. Interesting. Are you guys, of course, you're in the same business. You are storytellers now. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, we love to find like the stories behind the stories too. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, um, well, that's great. So uh, no, I think uh, I think that's supposed to be uh, the motivation uh, to uh, to tell stories. Cool. Did you know you wanted to get into acting before you became a professional soccer or a football player? Talking about this yesterday, I think it came up quite early. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. There, there was no one around here. No one in my family is into acting or artists or musicians so it was a long journey it's like you know if you're the only one you have to in your uh, community or something it's hard you know because uh, yeah. you have to break out because uh, you know i remember totally. yeah after i finished i i did a couple of years uh, for money in in a club in oslo and i remember first training i came just from uh, ballet uh, the ballet class Straight, oh, really? into, straight into the the room with the boys, you know, as in boys. Uh, <laughs> that was quite weird, you know. <laughs> oh my God. You can see me in the tights, right? Oh, the yeah. I'm oh, totally. You can see uh, Uba uh, in the tights, right? Yep, yep. A hundred percent. Exactly. <laughs> Doing the, the, <laughs> the practicing, yeah. No, so they get ready uh, for those Viking battles. Yeah, exactly. You need that yeah. footwork, and uh... yeah, I should have. Uh, maybe I should have watched my uh, footwork a little bit better than the final no. match. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I know you. I know you guys out there, fans. You're still crying about Uber I had to go, but I'm sorry that we were. Yeah, you should call Bernal, uh, Bernal Conwell. You know, I know was... it was a great outing, though. I mean, oh. I'll be honest. It it's something I think that really your performance as Ubo is something that really made us latch on to the Last Kingdom. Oh, cool. Um, That's great. Thank you. Totally. I mean, part of the reason why we love The, the Last Kingdom so much is that Viking uh, Dane personality. Mm. And I think you kind of set a precedent for that because you go and you watch season two and Siegfried and Eric are kind of using the same kind of um, kind of like curious malicious Viking humor. humor mm. And and I, I'm sure you inspired a lot of that um, from what you did in season one. Um, so your legacy, I would say, in the show lives on past season one for sure. Thanks to you guys, well. <laughs> and, and all the all, all the fans out there. But uh, yeah, no, tell me, what what was it that sort of caught you on? You said a lot about it now, but did you know about Bernard Cornwell's books before? Did you had you seen uh, Vikings as the show, or were you interested in Viking uh, mythology and history, or? Honestly, no. Uh, the Last Kingdom is really what got us into the whole Viking mythology interest. We we watched The Last Kingdom before we saw the show Vikings. Um, actually, I almost we I was saying I don't know if we should watch The Last Kingdom. It kind of looks like it might be like a copy of Vikings. I've never seen Vikings, yeah. uh, but then we started it and it was amazing. It became our favorite show very quickly. Yeah, and we did we we did watch after we finished The Last Kingdom. We watched Vikings. Mm. and it was enjoyable but it wasn't as good as last kingdom uh, oh, at least not you. for us not for um, us totally not for us cool i think we we're expecting some of that same kind of um humor from the vikings and in, in, in vikings <laughs> and they do kind of in season two they start bringing it a little bit more but um overall yeah last kingdom was far superior for us uh -huh. oh, it's interesting that you should mention the humor. I mean, obviously, it's all in the writing. So when you get the script and uh, the scenes are laid out as the iconic scene uh, in, in season one, in the second or third episode, where we have some fun with the king there. Yeah, you know? King Edmund. Yeah, yeah King Edmund, uh, beautifully played by uh, Jason Fleming, you know. Yes. Uh, anyway, but there's a lot of that humor there, and I, I, I trained for this part with... Um, are you guys familiar with the Viking martial art called Glima? No, no. No? You should look it up. It's sort of the Viking version of wrestling, the Greek wrestling. So this is what, uh, in the sagas, they tell about this uh, way of fighting, like, uh, like that was what they did, the Glima. And I trained with... Uh, uh, the Scandinavian champion in, in Glima. Uh, and it's also, uh, it's a uh, hand-to-hand -hand battle, and it's also with sword, it's with axe. Cool. Um, and one of the things that we picked up really early, that uh, this is a kind of game, 
that uh, they would think the Vikings did from very, very early age. So it was a, the element of having fun, you know, like playing around with stuff, like, you know, Uthred, when, when the king drops him in the water, I think that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a big joke. They like things like that, you know, so they would sort of tease and work with the, the, the young arslings from their, their really young age, right? Yeah. So that, that was an element that I, I really, um, I owe that to my trainer that okay. he sort of brought that to me very early. And sometimes you get parts and scenes where you can, you can use all this material you, you, you find. But of course, other times, like in Marvel maybe, it's more like a formula you have to fit into. And in The Last Kingdom, as you know, Nick Murphy did the, two for the first two episodes and right. he allowed me to, to come in with whatever I had. And, this is, uh, and sometimes it happens in your career that they actually like what you do <laughs> the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they sort of give you the freedom. I think this is, uh, I've been very lucky in my career that uh, a lot of people think, okay, let's just keep the camera rolling, right? Uh, so that was also a, a, a great thing with the Uber that uh, I, I, I had that always in the back of my mind that I would bring this playfulness yeah. In every, uh, you know, and I think that from the sagas and, and uh, it's something there with the Vikings, they, of course, we want to see them as uh, cruel, and very brutal. And, but in a way, I mean, up in Norway, they were farmers and not mm -hmm. all of them went. I mean, uh, Viking means to, to travel, go into Vikings, to travel somewhere. And, you know, okay. so, yeah. and the Vikings that we know that maybe did all the, the mad stuff abroad. abroad. They were the ba Bashakish, you know, they were the crazy ones. They called Bashark. Uh, and that's a saying in Norway that if you go totally mental, you go Bashark. Oh, so this is oh kind of like yeah. berserk? Berserkers, like berserkers. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Berserkers. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, they're berserkers. So they will send them in first. I mean, but all Vikings were not like that. And I think it's an element from really young age to play around, to have fun with these games, which uh, eventually led to the martial art called Glima. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. interesting. That's what really helped us latch on, again, is that they weren't just a one-dimensional evil bad guy. As you said, they weren't just berserker all the time. They had humor. They mm. thought about things. Mm. That's, and then we really thought, you know, Abba your portrayal of Zubba is really exemplified and I think really helped stick us into the show then. Totally. I 100% that, agree. That's good. I, I mean, finally, my, my looks got to use, yeah? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, Add a little I'm, tattoo. All good. Uh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> give, give, give the guy his own, a beard and a mustache and we're ready to go. Yeah. Totally. Totally. You, know, you, you know that when I did the audition, I, I didn't have a beard, like. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the tape online? Yeah, we watched yes. the tape, yeah. Did you hear my son and my wife and my friends, they're all doing the other characters? Oh, no, I didn't. We didn't realize. Okay. It's a long story short. I've been acting for 30 years, 25 at the time in Norway, trained in London, did the classical Hamlet, you know, Midsummer Night's Dream, right. you know, picking up speed, doing stuff here. And I thought, we have to go a step further and I always wanted to go international and then Game of Thrones has already been launched. So I, I started to grow big and audition for that. Uh, I tried a couple of times uh, and Giants Bane, that was stolen, ah. by, stolen by my friend or he deserves it. <laughs> anyway, so uh, one day I said, oh, fuck this. I'm not, excuse my language. I'm no, not going to, no uh, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, let's try something else. So I shaved off my beard. I had a beard like this. I shaved it off. And, and as I, I put the razor down, the, the phone rings, and it's my agent. And she said, hey, Runa, we have a great audition for you. It's for a Viking part. Uh, and I said, oh, my God, my beard is gone. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't do an audition for a Viking part without a beard. Without a beard. <laughs> but anyway, and then she said very wisely, Rune, she's from Finland, by the way. Rune, maybe this Viking doesn't have a beard. <laughs> there you go. 
Anyway, and the yeah. rest is history. And then you did, you did grow the beard back, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Was that something on your end that you wanted to grow the beard then for the character? Uh, not really. I mean, I just turned up in uh, Budapest for the first meeting. I, I, you know, I didn't meet any of these guys. They just cast me. So mm-hmm. uh, usually you get a call back and you fly out and you meet the director. So, but I did two tapes. I did the tape that you saw online. It's online. I did that. It, it drove me nuts as always when you have to wait for the feedback. And it took about one month uh, wow. before they came back. And why did they? Why didn't they come back? They just said, "Oh, Runa, you were very good, but Nick had to have a. a he went for a holiday." <laughs> so, oh, great. So, you know, this is actor's life, right? Yeah. So they came back and they said, "Yeah, Runa, they they loved your tape, uh, put, but could you do another tape? And could you add a little bit of humor?" So then I said, uh, "Okay, I'll try my best." And I did another one, uh, and then I was booked, and I didn't see them again until I turned out for the reading of the script in Budapest, and my name was next to <coughs> Rutger Hauer's uh, wow. name, and I went, uh, no, this is not happening. This, this, this is un, this is un, so wow. surreal. So I, Rutger Hauer, yeah, wow. Oh, come on, guys, you know. Yeah. So uh, and then I had a beard and. Uh, yeah, obviously the tattoo we sort of found the shape of it together with the. the yeah. Uh, so did you come help come up with that look? A little bit, yeah. We worked sort of on different. They they had a lot of things planned. Obviously, they're very good with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we had some ideas. I wanted to have a tattoo. I thought that was really good uh, in the face. And, did that uh, signify anything specifically for you? The the tattoo that you did have. Yeah, I mean, this is also they were. In the sagas, you get the impression that they were also vain, you know. Right. These big, brutal Vikings, they were vain. They had, you know, they looked after their beard. So they were not like dirty, dirty. Even the Last Kingdom is quite dirty, dirty. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but they would look they look after their, uh, their appearance. So they would have tattoos. Their hair would be back. So we had sort of uh, some idea. And... You see the tattoo is a, um, I don't know, is it a snake? It's like a serpent, right? Yeah. It comes up. Yeah. yeah. It comes up and on the front of the boats, they have this. So obviously yes. he has been traveling and it's also a snake look there or I don't yeah. remember, but it also something that uh, Uber, I think as a warrior, there's a symbol of warrior. So that was also something I wanted to have. Very cool. Now, did you know who the real um, Ubba was before coming onto the show? I mean, I did a l- little bit of research, obviously, but in our story, it's 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 different. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had to uh, to read uh, Bernie Cornwall's book, so I knew, of course, that I wasn't going to be in season four, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> did did you know it was just going to be one season? No, I, I, I thought, I hoped it would be a couple of seasons. But of course, you know, they have to sort of edit down everything because it's so much so, material, right? Yeah, yeah, so packed. But you know, you know how Ubo dies in the books, right? No, I don't know how he dies in the books. I've only read the first book. That's, that's the only one I've read so far. Because he's in, I think he dies in the second or third. Okay. Yeah. So no, it's a big fight on the, on the uh, on the, the beach. Same bat. Okay. No, no it's, it's the, the the end fight is completely different. Well, really? So the the director Bernard also they wanted to to have something more spectacular, I think. Okay. And as as, as I moved in, also they saw the potential of <laughs> having something else. I leave that to the to your listeners and viewers, and they can go out and check out. Uh, Uber dies in 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 uh, Bernard Cornwall's books. Cool, Ooh, definitely Thanks. will. Yeah, but the the fight you did have though it was still pretty epic, at least for us, not oh, knowing yeah. anything happens in the book. Because uh, oh, thank you. It's you confronting Utred. You know, uh, you you just got out, just put a shirt on. You don't have any shoes on. <laughs> Uh, just all the men around you, the fire going. I mean, it's, because it wasn't going to take long. It's not going to take long. <laughs> I think you say. <laughs> there was uh, business to complete in the tent. 
Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Now I heard a story about this this fight. Um, and I, I'll ask you if this is true. I heard that when you were you guys were doing this fight with Alexander Draymond that he had a plastic shield at first and that you just kept coming down so hard with your axe that it kept breaking the shield. So they moved to a wooden shield with metal bracing and then you kept breaking that too. Is this true? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I mean, Alexander is a fantastic, uh, he's a great actor, a great guy. Yeah. And he's also a guy, he prepares really, really thorough and he's, he knows his martial art and, uh, and he's also, he wants to do things like for real. Yeah. For real, real, as, as, as long as uh, we're covered by the insurance, of course. But um, no, the, the, the guys making the shields, they, yeah, they had a proposition to use sort of the fake one. And uh, there's a, a little bit more to that story because they also have a thing with insurance that you can't really use a real axe, you no. know? Because if you hit the DOP or, you know, Chas Bain, the DOP, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he's on handheld most of the time. You can see him inside the shield wall. Yeah. He gets right in on the action. He can carry that for 12 minutes, and he does that for three months every wow. day. He's one of a kind. So, you know, you don't want to swing your axe and then just, you know, hit him over the head. So they give you a, a rubber something, you know, yeah. uh, replica, right? This is, this is make-believe, right? Yeah, but but as I told you earlier on, I've been training with my boys in Norway, and that was relax. So when I came on set, I said, to, "You know, I can't go around with this thing. You know, give me a relax." And so it was like <laughs> uh, uh, the actor from Norway playing over. It's like everyone going on the walkie. He wants to relax, so they had to <laughs> they had to go all the way to the top and say, "You know." Uh, yeah, he wants to relax, so it's, you know, five different people, wow, 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 you know? Uh, and in the end, I was allowed to have the relax. You see in the, um, the scene when we torture Edmund, um, there's a scene there where I actually have the axe straight in front of me, it's saying something, and you see the axe here, and this is relax. So in things like this, I want it, you know? So when we got to the end scene, you know, I was used to having the axe, and I thought okay. in the close in close ups it would look really great. But uh, as you know, when you hit it full power uh, and <laughs> it's a wooden shield, um, the guys making the props they had a problem because we were we were actually breaking them. I was wow. breaking his shield, so I think they had they were on. I think they prepared six, and then when they were on four, they were like. Uh, guys, calm down, you know, <laughs> we, we only have two left. So anyway, it was quite funny. Um, and at one stage, Chas uh, was with the camera here and they wanted to, to see my axe go straight to, through, through the, the shield. Yeah. The camera was here. So he was hiding here and I was mad because I was hitting it. And the top of the, the axe flew. So, you know, it went. Oh, so you can imagine because the whole crew is behind him, you know. So he was all covered with a shield. But the big top of the axe just went. Boom. And, uh, yeah. Then everyone, of course, we were all reminded why we used the replica. <laughs> <laughs> that is something in the fight, though. Uhtred's shield does get uh, smashed away, though, by the axe. It's a great element. Yeah, it's good. And, uh, I mean, there's always safety first in our business, right? right. Uh, we have a, had a great uh, fight instructor called the Levante. You can look him up yeah. on uh, It IMDb. comes up every time, every talk yeah. we have. Oh, yeah. Levante yeah. Lejac. You know, so when you're working with guys like that, you know, you're in good hands, but they're always safety first, safety first, because there's some, some things that, uh, you know, it can be dangerous. So, yeah. Totally. Very cool. But yeah, that scene is, is super well done. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it was like preparing for that battle with, uh, with Uhtred? Uh, it's, it's a big uh, preparation because you sort of get the fight, how they want it done. And then we have to prepare uh, by ourselves. Uh, and of course, we shoot a lot, even though they have 
you know, they spend a lot of time. We have to practice a lot with our stunt doubles or with other people. And then we actually meet and we do everything, the routine together. So we shot that during, I think, or three nights. And that's, that's a lot of work in three nights because it's a big fight and you do... And, there's a lot of angles, a lot of shots. There was a little bit of pressure there because I think, you know, it's uh, it's hard to do so many physical things and in, uh, things in such a short period. But that that's the nature of these shows, you know. Yeah. But uh, we were prepared, and when we met, we obviously had done some work together, so we knew each other, and uh, uh, so then it was just trying to sort of find that dance you know together and um, yeah it was quite intense as we got more and more tired also you yeah know. the nature of our business is also to do it again you know over and over again i must say that it's it's okay to practice on your own uh, practice with alexander but then you bring in the crowd and it's like for real real and then the, your you get your adrenaline rush you know and that's when it's yeah then it's really hard because then you get that on top of everything because you had uh, all the, I don't know how many extras they had, maybe close to 100. And yeah. when they start to shout and scream and it's the middle of the night, you know, it's like quite, uh, it's, a, it's a strong uh, experience and you still have to remember your moves and don't, right. uh, uh, don't hit the lead actor over the head. And... <laughs> a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I did uh, Edit Eagle with Hugh Jackman, obviously, you know, the director walks up, walks up to me every five minutes going, Rune, remember, don't hit him on the nose. You know? <laughs> uh, and I said, yeah, I'm aware of that. I, I know it's Wolverine, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you survived, though. Wolverine uh, at yeah. least hasn't come after you yet. So. <laughs> not, not, not many people... Uh, Survive that hitting a Wolverine over the head, right? Yeah, yeah. We I just watched that uh, that punch uh, not that long ago where you hit Hugh Jackman in uh, the Eagle. Uh, mm. How was it like working with Hugh Jackman in that movie? Iconic again, iconic actor, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Great guy. Yeah, he's kind of you know he's very playful. He he wants to try out things, but. Uh, these guys, you know, they've been around for a long time and they all, it's like testing the new guy on the block also. Mm, so I remember, okay. and of course we had a superstar now, Dexter Fletcher. I mean, a great actor before he went into directing, but now obviously done um, Bohemian Rhapsody. And, oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dexter is a big, big star now. Uh, did the movie with the, you know, the Elton John story. So Dexter is like, yeah, very energetic, and he's uh, he's a friend of Jason, Jason Fleming, right? He's a Cockney. Oh, I mate. Oh, Aruna, are you ready to go? Uh, this is Hugh Jackman, right? Don't hit him over the nose, right? He's he's uh, he, he's worth a lot of money, mate. You're not you you're not worth fuck all, mate. So he's the, he's the fucking star, mate. All right, all right. So he was like, all all the time, you know. We rehearsed the scene before and to Jackman, uh, you looked me into the eyes and we did like connecting. But when Dexter said, oh, am I, oh, let's do this now. Get this fucking thing in the can. And he said, uh, uh, and then to Jackman, put, he put his, you, you know, in the movie he has his uh, sunglasses on. So suddenly I was like, oh, you know, because I couldn't see his eyes. So he was, you know, he was testing who's his, who's ah. his, uh, you know, seeing what, what happens now. And of course, uh, we did a couple of takes. And uh, this is, this is uh, a scene where we sort of overlook the, the arena and Eddie is jumping. So, you know, we're just standing there looking and, uh, and I say something, you're a disgrace or something. He's a disgrace. So we did different takes uh, and he turns to me and walks off. And uh, one take, he walks towards me and he kisses me. You know? <laughs> so, this is the kind of, you know, because uh, it's like, because he was drinking, uh, the character was drinking. So, right. you know, he's tried different things. But um, generally, I have to say, to work with a guy like that is really inspiring and it's really, really friendly and down to earth and, uh, and preparing for the, the hitting him. It, 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 this is the same with the fights with uh, Uber and uh, Uther. It's a lot with precision. You have yeah. to be really precise and 
So this is the hard thing because this is the challenge then is that you have to be concentrated and on, you know, basically on the ball. Yeah. Uh, if you do it wrong, I mean, you could hurt someone and it doesn't look good because the camera, you know, it, it should look like I hit him on the nose. But obviously right. I, I, I hit him so close. No wonder why they come to say, you know, be careful because it's really, really close. It's, we have a legendary stunt coordinator said uh, afterwards, my, you know, this is great work. This is how we want it. It's really, really close to his nose. <laughs> so the camera picks up. It's not to his nose because it's past his ear. But anyway, right. no, it's great. And um, so that was good fun. The sauna scene was different. It was... Uh, <laughs> That was also fun. Then you have to uh, deal with props as well. Do you have any like skiing background or anything like that as yourself? Not ski jumping, just cross country. But we, we grew up, I remember Eddie Beagle. So we grew up with the Norwegians were great um, skiers, at the, the ski jumpers at the time. So obviously, are you skiers? No, no, no. I broke, the first time I broke my nose, I was ice skating. So I try to avoid sliding on my feet ever again. <laughs> so. But you guys ice, uh, ice skate, right? Mm. Yeah, actually, I, I played hockey. Cool, man. And I, I had a question for you, actually, about something. Okay. That I had never heard of called Bandy. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I'd never heard of this, um, but it looks like it's a combination of ice hockey and field hockey. Could say um, that. And you played, right? Yeah, I played. So, yeah, I think there's, is it 12 or 13 nations now that do this game, bandy? It's like mm-hmm. field, field hockey on a big a football pitch, right? Okay. Uh, instead of the uh, puck, it's a small round ball. Uh, so it's a different, uh, but we're on ice and we're on skates. Uh, when I played, I, I told the... Uh, my son and his friends yesterday that uh, I have a bronze medal from the world championships. Right. And, and then I said, do you know how, how many teams competed or was in the tournament? It's only four. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be like Scandinavian countries and Russia, um, but now uh, America is there, Canada, it's wow. about 12, 15. It's it's not as uh, physical as ice hockey, but still, okay. uh, but but it's very very fast because you know obviously on skates on ice it's good and we usually play outdoors, but now they also have can play it indoors. It's it's a fun game and I was on like a normal hockey rink. No, no, it's like a football, like a but soccer. it's like a football. Oh wow, so it's soccer soccer rink soccer okay. like the full size. Wow. So you know you 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 get a, you gain a lot of speed when you sort of. Oh Go. yeah. Yeah. Now, did you ever play hockey? No. No. I, just... I, I play this game on an ice hockey rink. Okay. Just like for, for fun, we sort of played this bandy in a ice hockey rink. And that was more physical when we are you a tackler or are you a sort of a smooth dancer or both? Me? I, yeah. I was I don't know, a little bit of both. Um I was pretty good at passing. I don't know, it depended yeah. season to season, but I was also one of the bigger guys on the ice, so you know cool but yeah you still play just pick up just like pond hockey outside okay good but yeah not not on a team anymore cool yeah that's cool i, was, I just was curious about bandy because i had never heard of it before it's, it's yeah very cool. it's, a, it's a scandinavian thing it's it's good fun it's yeah it's re- really enjoyable it's uh because it goes so fast it's not something you really watch on telly they tried in sweden for a long time it's but it's not like a big game on telly so maybe that's why people don't see it all over the world like around the world but it's a b a n d y family right. so it's a fun game i was in the national team but as an old friend of mine said uh, oh really Rooney? you're in the national team yeah 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 and he says uh, oh runa you know what i think that everyone that plays band in norway has been in the national team so. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old joke from the old days <laughs> You do have a pretty athletic background, though. Uh, and then when you went into The Last Kingdom, uh, did you do anything? I know you, you told us about the martial arts wrestling training for that. Is there anything mm-hmm. else training specific wise you did to get ready for the role of Uba? As you say, it's, uh, this is a kind of thing that sometimes in your career, maybe two, three times in your career, you get the part that's really, that's your part, everything. 
and this is my DNA, it's my, my looks, my physicality, my background as an athlete. It was everything, everything came together. So I, I did the training I had to do, uh, obviously being in shape, like for Captain Marvel, I also, yeah. I, I like the preparation. I mean, uh, some people will just put on some extra padding for the Marvel movies if they can't get into shape, but I actually did the groundwork. So, oh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> cool. but uh, no, for Last Kingdom, I think it, the work with uh, the sword and the ax, that was, um, and that, so the wrestling thing that, I, you know, you know, you know when you do wrestling, right? It yeah, really, yeah. really, it takes a lot of uh, stamina and, um, and strength. So you know, you do that for uh, two minutes on uh, with a, uh, you know, you're quite um, you're done, exhausted. You're done. <laughs> yes. No, so that that really was my preparation, and uh, I read a lot, uh, read a lot about the mythology and. Um, trying to find specific things that I could use. So that was my preparation. When you were describing how, like the pressure of doing um, that battle scene at Canewit with, with Uhtred, do you find any similarities to like the preparation you would do and then the adrenaline you would feel doing the scene um, compared to like when you were a soccer player practicing with the game and then going out of the field? Was there any kind of similarities there? Or did you take anything from being an athlete to, to being an actor? Uh, basically, I'm an athlete. Right. Right. So uh, I'm I'm a performer, and I always had to uh, prepare for the the ultimate uh, show or game. That, right. that that's that's me. So whether it's acting or sport or whatever, now it's acting. It's the same kind of kick of adrenaline, preparation, concentration, and it, it's it should all melt together in that one split second in every tackle in every hit with the, <laughs> the axe yeah but you know over the years uh, in in the acting it, it, in front of the camera anyway it's like you need uh, sounds strange maybe but you need more this kind of real relaxation than okay. this this sort of aggressive uh, energy that you can maybe use more or need on, on a soccer pitch or okay. in a mmr cage even though when I do my uh, <laughs> scream as Abba, obviously it's it's a lot of energy, but you have to have a relax. You have to be relaxed at the same time. This is quite okay. interesting because people have to get uh, the audience uh, or the camera first of all has to look inside you, and and if you close down, you can't. They they won't reach you. So right. it's a combination there of of that kind of energy you have to have, but. Uh, of course, in a fight like that, you yeah you have to bring also energy that will break straight through your television set at home. Of course, I remember I was in I was in London, uh, and I saw the first trailer from BBC Two. I was there with my my son to see uh, Chelsea playing, and that's my son's team. You know I'm Leeds, right? Right, you're Leeds. We were there in this. Uh, <laughs> Terrible hotel room. It was a three-star hotel room in London. <laughs> you know, it was terrible. Uh, anyway, and we were watching, and then suddenly the first trailer came on, and it was from the scene in the monastery with uh, Edmund, right? But I remember what they had, because Chaz was uh, filming, and I thought I have to give them something. So I took my arms out, and I just went with a whoa. And I, I, I that, it's not in the series at all, but okay. it's in, it's in this one teaser. Oh. And I remember seeing it, and I thought, oh my god! So then I had the feeling they uh, used the right bits because yeah. you know, where I said, if they can bring that energy onto the finished product, I, you know, we're we're on our way. Yeah, totally. And that and that scream that you do do um, that's on the show right before you um, battle Uhtred is just epic i mean like yeah. you say it comes through the tv it's like you feel on edge it's pretty awesome it's uh yeah it's a norwegian norwegian young man in his early days on aquavit a light, late night <laughs> <laughs> if you ever tried aquavit you know what it can do to you <laughs> so, no but this is also uh this is also connecting i think to the vikings they're very much connected with nature and you can see this scream doesn't come from me alone. I, I, I gather all the strength from heaven and earth. 
Yeah. It goes straight through me. And if you're open and you can sort of release that without uh, blocking it, you can get, if you're lucky, you can get something like that <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because it really comes through that uh, Uba is very connected with his gods, mm. especially through story. Oh, and, yeah. and he has such a faith with his gods. And that's part of how Uhtred kind of goads him into, you know, saying maybe the gods, you know, aren't favoring you. And so it's a pretty cool connection and something that I think probably illustrates a little bit of the Viking mentality, you know, mm. in history, too. So did you do any research into, you said earlier, you looked into kind of the, the myths, the Norse mythology. Um, and oh, that's yeah. kind of is that what you kind of took into Abba? Oh yeah, I mean, as you see, he was very much into the runes, as my name comes from the runes. Yeah. Rune, he comes from that, you know, the first alphabet, runer, it's a Viking alp alphabet. So oh, okay. they will look into the runes to see what's going on. So yeah, the Nordic mythology is very, very, very interesting. So uh, obviously, did a lot of research with that. You know, and we, we talk about this with some of the other actors about how the Christians in the show, they all, they, they pretty much dismiss all the other gods, like immediately. Mm -hmm. But the Danes on the show, because they're polytheistic, they kind of are like, you're curious about this God who saved this man from the arrows. And I think that's something that we certainly enjoyed watching um, mm -hmm. the Vikings kind of trying to learn about the other side's God and how it ticks and stuff. Yeah. Which kind of brings us to that Edmund scene. And I know mm. we'd love to talk about that and how you kind of approach that scene. Do you know the mythology and the gods and uh, from the Nordic history or what you say, the mythology? It's like with the Greeks, it's like the sun and uh, heaven. And uh, I shouldn't say it's, uh, we were not into uh, the planets. It's not like Venus. It's not like this, but we were very much into the sun and and nature, everything was there, and the Thor, like thunder. And as you know, uh, every day of the week comes from Greek mythology, where they have one day uh, for uh, for all the gods. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Monday, Sunday was Sunday, you know. Uh, and we had our own because Thursday was also a Greek god, but we made our own, obviously, because Thursday is Thur Thursday. Thursday, mm -hmm. right, all right, right. with a hammer. So you know, the, this goes back a long, long time because I mean, the Greeks was out out there before we were. I suppose they went that way. We were not born up in the north. We came traveling up here, right, from from the Middle East. That's where it all started, guys. Remember that. So, <laughs> and, they, and this is like three and three thousand five hundred years, four thousand years before Christ. You know. So there's been people, there's been clever guys around for a long time before we started to think that we found gold and know everything in the world. As uh, maybe these days, some people realize that uh, mm. maybe we have a few things to learn. Anyway, that was <laughs> the, po the political statement. <laughs> and, and then the director goes, Runa, should we cut around that? No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so anyway, um, you were saying that uh, we were investigating, and no, we're coming into the scene in the in the monastery, right? Yeah, yeah. We prepared a lot. I mean, it was a big scene, and it's, uh, I was prepared also. I like that when you get a scene in in audition, because then you prepared, and then you done it like you worked with it before. Because I worked with it, then obviously for the audition. When we got to do it, it was uh, quite interesting because uh, they were lucky enough to get Jason Fleming to to uh, do Edmund, right? Uh, great actor. I don't know if you've seen their early work, uh, like Lock, Stock and Two Barrels. Mm. A guy which is one of his first movie before Snatch. Yeah, it's been a while, but I I have seen it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's uh, I think it's on YouTube or something now. Jason and Dexter, Dexter Fletcher, they're in it together, and. Uh, yeah, another footballer, Vinnie Jones, is in it. <laughs> they were lucky enough to get him. or uh, So he flew out the day before we were going to shoot it. So we rehearsed it late at night. I never met Jason before. Very, very friendly. Very great guy. Great stories. He, he worked with them all. So, you know, he was also Cockney. You know, so he's very joyful, very telling a lot of jokes, cracking jokes all the time. Uh, but we rehearsed it like in an office space. Can you imagine that scene in an office? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> 
uh, Nick and Chas Bain, the DOP, they, they always talked about a golden slate. Uh, so they wanted to do like orchestra to block everything. And they wanted to have a golden slate that the whole, whole scene will run like for eight, nine, Ooh. 10, 11, 12 minutes. Because 12 minutes, then Chas had to have, have a little break. So they were looking after the, they were looking for the golden slate because then they they had that and they could edit in that sort of the golden one the best one that you know yeah okay mm. so that was the uh, <laughs> that was the sort of the uh, the goal or the motivation or the the aim when we actually started to shoot it the next day but you know suddenly <laughs> you walk into the room and you're there with your relax you are suddenly realizing that it's not an empty office space it's uh, oh there's a dead body and there's <laughs> another extra and uh, <laughs> there's a big cross and there's an out <laughs> so by the time you start <laughs> with nick they go action i mean oh god it's so many things happening you know yeah. So we got, I think we got one golden slate, but as you can see, there's a lot of specific work there. Very interesting working scenographies like that. You know, the whole set, like we say, yeah. it's because it's so real. It's like you get so much just walking on set. I mean, you're back in those days. So, yeah. you know, you got a lot from that. And I think that was my, I can't remember now, but was it my first scene? Really? I'm not, I Maybe. couldn't be, because usually they warm you up, so you do some easier stuff first. So it couldn't have been. But anyway, we had fun with that, and a uh, lot of things going on. There were beer being handled, cups. We didn't have that in the, the office space. So, you know, all these things, <laughs> all these things are there and can throw an actor. It can throw you, you can forget your lines, you can do stuff that wasn't planned. You know, that's where you have to learn your text really, really thorough because things can happen when you mm. shoot it. You know, the, wall, the walls can come down, but you still have to remember what, what, what's going on, right? Mm. So we had fun with that, playing around. And as you say, you know, we take, uh, we're very curious to play the playing element with Uber, but he was always listening. I don't know if you remember or saw that, but he's always listening to yeah. something. Uh, so he's a little bit paranoid and he, he mm. always listens to nature. He listens to signs from the gods, whether it's safe or not. So it's also this sense that he's always looking if there's something going on. We tried to bring that in, and uh, it was quite in intense. I mean, there's some great actors in that room, I have to say. So when you have players like that, because uh, it's it's a lot about listening to the others, yeah. and listening and responding. That's why we got two ears and one mouth. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so this is also in acting. And it was some funny lines. I mean, the scene was yeah. brilliant. The scene is just so well written. Yes. Yeah. I have to say, you steal the scene, though, for us, for sure, in that, <laughs> that moment, uh, especially uh, at the end, after he tells you the story, and you're like, all right, so we will get baptized if we shoot Do you with arrows, if you survive. <laughs> yeah. And then he's, when he goes, uh, shoot, and you're yeah. like, no, these are my men. I will tell yeah. them when to shoot. Yeah. Shoot. shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. And uh, of course, these are men of science. <laughs> exactly. Come on, guys. We know what to do. And in TV and film, it's a lot to, to do with editing. But uh, that thing is also, as an actor, without timing, you have nothing. And we found that right timing also, you know, because you can't really go in and edit, shoot, shoot. So it's a, it's a dispense there, you know, you have to hold, hold it. So that's quite uh, quite interesting. So we found that oh, we were exhausted by the end of the day. It was like wow. And uh, Alexander was waiting because you know he was listening outside. So you know, and what we do when we're not in, we called in four o'clock in the morning, and you know we sleep in our trailers. It's not it's not so uh, glamorous as people think actually. 
but then he yeah. waits and you, you feel that oh my god we have to move on and but we tried to take our time and Jason was only there for a day I think uh, so we had we had to get it it was quite intense yeah. and then you nail the other line where you say um, <laughs> would you like the clubbing or the arrow will the arrows be sufficient <laughs> would you like to, would you like to be clubbed or will the arrows be sufficient? Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, That's just awesome. So, he wants to wash me? <laughs> yes, what? yes, wash. What? I love, I love when you guys, um, they, he says baptism and you and Guthrum yeah. just like yeah. turn to Uhtred. <laughs> yeah. And he says that uh, it's the same as uh, without the rape and the pillaging or drinking or something. It's the same as... Uh, yeah. And we find that really boring. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Another great funny moment you have is when you meet you meet Uhtred again later before the Battle of Canewit. Yeah. And you piece of weasel shit. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of weasel shit. Yeah, it's really great. I don't know if that's, was it someone, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a line that came up there. I'm not oh, yeah? sure. Yeah. Because we're trying to find something that was really humiliating and terrible. <laughs> and I think I came up with the idea that we should call him a, we <laughs> a weasel shit. And I remember the, uh, <laughs> the actors, yeah, it was hard enough to break up in after because I, I saved it. Usually, I pre <laughs> if I prepared something like that, I would warn them that yeah, I will do something. But I don't know if you saw um, the spitting. I you yes. know yeah 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 this is also something because i was and something came out and i said you know uh, if i spit is it okay so sometimes you have to warn your fellow actors that you're going to do something but sometimes also <laughs> you want to play it in the moment as you jackman did like to get a special reaction right because that brings life because that's yeah. what we need in front of the camera they will give you as we say a little screwball or something twist a little twist that will throw, throw them a curveball yeah, yeah. yeah curveball so I think maybe the 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 weasel shit was a curveball. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I, I think it was because because it's quite absurd. I mean, what does it mean? <laughs> I never heard it before, never again. Yeah, we had neither, but we said it like every day after. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a great uh, meme we send to each other now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh great! Yeah, oh, totally, totally. Whenever we're upset with each other, so <laughs> the weasel shit. Yeah. Piece of weasel shit. <laughs> And it's, it was funny because that scene, um, the sun was going, so the light was going, so we had to move backwards all the time. So in the end, uh, the last takes, we are basically standing on one leg because we we're just there to, 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 to get the light. So it's wow. quite absurd. And they, they build a, a sort of a platform like behind us so we wouldn't fall backwards down. So oh. we were sort of balancing. Uh, story and me, uh, Henning, Valin and me, we were we were pushed backwards, not by the not by Uthred, but by the sun, because the sun was going. Yeah, this is things you don't see, you know. Cause, yeah, the and, challenges uh, to get. Yeah, it's interesting. It looks like they use a lot of natural light on yeah. the show. Yeah, I think that does a good job to make it look real. Um, but that's interesting. Those challenging things to get continuity. Um, mm. to a scene that's 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 interesting for sure another moment too i think shows abba's playfulness is when it's in the first battle yeah, yeah. there's that awesome whisper scene in yeah. the shield wall and then there's the slaughter yeah. and you just are on your horse just laughing <laughs> and that's that's a cool little shot um that, that i tell you that's that was the first day of shooting for me okay so yeah that put me on a horse <laughs> and what a horse yeah no, that was the first, and that's Just also a big some, horse. how it was. Is it was a Shire, Shire, right. mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, huge. The horse was called Flossie. Okay. So yeah, Flossie was my friend for the whole shoot. <laughs> Great. This is also something you have to take. I mean, who can script that? I mean, you script laughter, you script uh, that people cry, but in a battle scene like that, and there's someone behind that seeing people being killed and he just laughs you have to take some uh, chances okay you know you have to be really have a lot of courage 
try and come with something that's unexpected in the moment. And this is something, I, it wasn't prepared. It was just came up and Chaz caught it on camera and they used it because it's, you know, it's so bizarre, the contrast, and it says so much about the Vikings, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Just, yeah. yeah, just a quick shot like that. That whole first scene really sets the tone and how we, we see the, the Danes there, the shield yeah. wall, the laughter. Yeah, yeah. And you can see the position that we set up the shield wall, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It was all orchestrated. There was yeah. a system and there was all whispers how they should do it, you know? Yeah. So they were clever, very clever fighters. Also, the, the shot of Uber there, he says he loves it. He loves his fighting. Yeah, and, the, and I think you say ease or something, and they just start yeah. taking the small steps back yes, and yes. to make the Saxons think that you guys are retreating. Exactly. Yeah, it's super cool. And it just shows the Viking like uh, cleverness that they had. And there you see the, the hardworking DOP and the directors and all the, all the crew on the show, how to make that work and Levante worked, worked with his stunt people and his uh, fighters and his extras. Yeah. Oh God, you know, to get this position, I think it's fantastic when you see the, the camera moves inside the shield wall Then he was there, you know, he, he was there really, you know. Because and then we're there too, as a, as a viewer, you know, it's so, it. yeah. You remember the opening scene of everything like uh, at Badenburg? No, at Badenburg, um, with the, uh where he's like, he's like running with the camera. Yeah. Yeah. And also a uh, great actor playing the young Uthred, Tom Taylor. Great. Cause you see it through his eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, that opening. I remember uh, we were doing some uh, ADR work in London. They flew me in and Nick Murphy was there and the guys working with the sound. I saw Tom Taylor in that first scene when he was Uthred looking out. And then we came to the shield world and I just start, I, I start to cry. Really? Oh, uh, it was just, uh, there's so many emotions going through me because all that hard work, I saw the talent, I saw what they were about to create. It was uh, very, that was the first time I saw it, you know? Wow. Uh, and I think so much is done with that opening, with that great actor, Tom Taylor, he, you know. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you probably seen him in, with Aris Elba in the big Black Tower, you know. He's a oh, fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you see the kind of talent you need to bring this, you know, a step further. The script is there, cast and crew, director, everything's there, but you need that extra. And I, when I saw that, I was, I was so uh, thankful. I was a part of this. Oh wow! This story and the story goes on. It's it a does. huge success, right? Is it not? Yeah, it's it's uh it was ranked number one at least on IMDb for a few days, if not a yeah. week, and then it's been trending on Netflix on and off. It's been in like the top ten for Netflix for at least the first like few weeks it was out. It was top mm. ten. We still think it's a little bit underrated, at least here in in the states. And we've been told that on some of our videos that people are kind of thankful that we're trying to promote it here in the states because mm. maybe in Europe it's bigger, but we'd always say compared to Vikings, even compared to sometimes Game of Thrones, we think Last mm. Kingdom as far as the story, the characters, mm. the humor is a notch above the rest. And we really believe that. Absolutely. Thank you. Totally, totally absolutely. And um, we're, we're just curious if you ever had another opportunity someday to play um, Uba, maybe <laughs> a spinoff or something, would you ever uh, reprise that role? Because we would love that. <laughs> a prequel maybe? A prequel. Yeah, yeah. How cool would that be? That were good, yeah. No, it should be good. I mean, they had uh, the guys at Carnival, they had, uh, you know, we talked about maybe Uber could come back, uh, like, you know. But then uh, it's all written in the books. So then Bernal, right. he's probably on book number 12 or something now, but it mm -hmm. would be great to do that character again. But in this story, uh, who knows what happens? I mean, he come. He could come back in someone's nightmare or something, and it could be yeah, great. That would be sweet. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I want now. I want a nightmare scene. Uhtred wakes up in the middle of the night, Ooh. just Abba, just crushing him. Stand, sta standing over and go. <laughs> I'll get my revenge on yeah. you. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fight you again. <laughs> so. 
just wait till you get to Valhalla. We will. <laughs> that, exactly. That's what I love, though, is that Uhtred has the respect for you. He yeah. doesn't necessarily want to kill you. It's just kind mm. of the position he's been put in. Mm. And to give you your axe before you die. And you look at it like, you know, mm. I need this to go to Valhalla. Very cool moment there, too. Mm. Yeah. It's a cool moment, uh, you know, fighters, big fighters, they respect each other. You know? yeah. In the old days, you know, in the battles, they will meet and they will greet and they will say, prepare their people, you know. So, uh, totally. So, you know, it's a lot of respect there. But yeah, that was also something, I mean, by the end of, <laughs> by the time we got to the last fight, Uber has been, I've been screaming so much and giving them so many options for, for my character. So, because I, what I really wanted to do is that when he sort of kills me before that, because he says in the old sagas that the, the Vikings would go out with a smile. Okay, so, cool. So <laughs> in a couple of takes, I was like screaming my head off and laughing, you know, like on the horse. And uh, yeah, a great director. Um, ben said, uh, Aruna, we heard you, we heard Uber scream so many times now, so I think we should leave it, <laughs> leave it for now. <laughs> but you know, the story in the sagas is that the, the, um, if you wouldn't die in battle, you wouldn't go to Valhalla. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so uh, you know, when the boats was going and the old man about to die, the, the Vikings, they, they, they couldn't die in their bed. So, you know, the boat was going and it was like, ah, oh, bring me, bring me, you know, <laughs> I want to die in battle. Because if they died in their bed, they will not go to Valhalla. Wow. So, so this was the big thing. And when they went, so basically we're dying, we're not dying, we're going to Valhalla. So they will, will go out with a smile. Yeah. But after but I think when I see that close up, there's a sense of smile or relief on Uber's face, maybe. When he gets the axe, I think so. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a moment of worry, like, yeah. oh, no, no, I don't have my axe. And then when yeah. he gives him, yeah, totally. Because then he's, he dies as a warrior. Yes. And that's the big difference. He will go to Valhalla, and in Valhalla, it's not over. There, he's there with Odin and Freya. So they are drinking and eating and preparing for the biggest fight that is, and that is, of course, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. That's it. It's interesting with the mythology, right? So it's yeah, not so all. We'll, so we'll it's it. not. What about the scene where you get both of your Achilles tendons <laughs> cut? Because when we when we first saw that, that just like blew us away, and we were we were in a school at the time when we Physical saw it. Physical therapy so like, school. Physio. Yeah. So we're like, oh, oh, that's oh a really? Yeah. yeah, so we're like, oh, oh man, that the rehab on that is going to be <laughs> a while before you get back to a battle. <laughs> He's going to cost his dude a lot of money <laughs> if he ever recovers. Yeah. Oh my God, no, it took a long time. It looks great, I think. Oh, um, yeah. A little too great, a little too like. <laughs> yeah. It makes ben, you check your ankles. Yeah, it's, it's so uh, good. Ben Sharman. He, he was very much into getting a spectacular. Uh, scene there with the uh, uber in the last last fight so i think that was his idea with the cutting cutting there yeah. so he really went for that and uh, the the makeup department and uh, we prepared a lot it took 45 minutes to prepare the the ankles or the achilles yeah. um and uh, yeah it was brutal and i think that's this is kind of things i love doing like falling in that way you know like i have a physicality and yeah. make it and make it look real make it look good you know i like that stuff i like even the sound that you give out a little bit yeah yeah you know it's i you know i'm an athlete as uh, right. I, I like the physical aspect of the acting so, yeah it all came together with uh, uber I, I wish i had uh, two three seasons two seasons would be great in the last yeah. kingdom that's what um, we we said, you know, we loved your whole arc and everything you did in it, but I wish, wish we could have yeah, just more. got one or a little two. Bit more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you, you made great with what you had. Very. So iconic. did they? Did they make models of your of the ankles? Was it just like models of your legs, or did you? How no. did they do it? They they built the ankles outside, so they had a lot of, yeah, an extra uh, layer oh, okay. outside. Yeah, oh. so they will actually put the sword in the the wound as you see gotcha um, speaking of makeup uh we're we're also huge fans of the marvel cinematic universe oh thank you and you were you were in captain marvel big blockbuster hit 
And uh, actually, before we saw that, we were uh, looking into your work and everything. We saw that you were going to be in Captain Marvel. Oh, cool. Um, and we were, we were really excited to see you as Bron Char, the, yeah. the blue Cree warrior. Uh, what was it like getting to make up for that then? Because you're, you're blue. <laughs> I, I'm blue. I'm a bit red today from the sun, but I was yeah. blue. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the office of uh, Sarah Finn, she cast all the Marvel movies, Jason and yeah, Marley. They're great fans of The Last Kingdom. So, okay. so I learned later that they saw Uber and they wanted to find something for me in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nice. So when the blue guy came up, <laughs> it's the blue guy. You need a big dude. Yeah, a big dude. I mean, originally, I think maybe some fans, they, they're a little bit disappointed because I think Bronchar, maybe he's not, he's not like a character that is described. Uh, he's not like really a, a big character in the comics. So, okay. you know, we don't know too much about him, but I think a lot of fans maybe would think like, oh, wow, he should have been, uh, you know, a six foot seven, you know, and really, really huge, you know, because I saw also some drawings of him that he's like really monstrous. So that was my only question when I spoke to the, the directors, the brilliant uh, Ryan Fleck and Anne Bowden, you know, does a great TV series on Netflix called Mrs. America, yeah? Mm, okay. I said, you know, I'm not that, I'm big, but I'm not that big, you know? I was happy to work with them because they wanted an actor. They come from independent movies, as if you look up their resumes, you know? They work with Ryan Gosling, with Mississippi Grinding, uh, with Ben, Ben, you know? Ben playing uh, the main scroll. Ben Mendelsohn. Oh, yeah, Ben Mendelsohn yeah, yeah. from uh, exactly. Australia, right? Exactly. Yep. So they worked with him before, and they, you know, they like to work with actors. So I think also that was some of the reason. They didn't pick me because of my size. I mean, there's bigger guys with bigger, uh, you, could you know, grab bigger big muscle. That's not an actor, you know? Exactly. And I'm not saying that big guys can't act. This is not right. what I'm saying, but they were not going back after the big muscles, when they decided to, to, to give me the part, I had an email from my ad, uh, agent uh, forwarded from them, <laughs> from Marvel, and they said, uh, oh, we love to have Runa, uh, Ryan, and uh, Anna is really pleased, uh, so he's good, but he needs to bulk up, bulk. <laughs> so I said, bulk up, I had to look it up on Google, you know, what was that bulk okay. up, yeah, so I need more bulks, you know. Right. So, <laughs> is, uh, uh, is weight training you something you do already because you're already like a pretty built dude <laughs> <laughs> no but then i really had to get oh, serious okay. man i was down the gym you know like six times six days a week going to totally mental you know i'm an athlete i prepare right yeah so i i said earlier on that some people just want to put on some extra padding if you're not if they're not big enough but i want to go Let's all in work oh my god so yeah, we, we got into a good size, but you know, not like the the big dudes. But anyway, we I think we uh, managed to get into a good physicality of the character and yeah. he has yeah, some pretty I, humorous beats as well, too. There's a moment yeah, where it's, uh, uh, it's, the other Cree warriors coming on and I think he, he says to them like, Oh, I think you're beautiful or something yeah, like that. <laughs> exactly. It was actually a little bit caught there. I think okay. Star Force there was more, a little bit more to the Star Force. Uh, but uh, as you see, the movie, uh, it's a big hit. So, you know, more of Bron Shah wouldn't have made it a bigger hit. But still, for me uh, personally, it could be have another, uh, maybe another minute in the movie would be fantastic. But uh, hopefully in uh, number two, we'll have more screen time. Even though I wanted to add something more, it was also a formula there with the, how they wanted to have it. Okay. Uh, but it was great. We have a team and we're part of the story. And we're in the beginning, we're in the end. Great end fight. Yeah. So I think you get kicked and go flying? Yeah, we uh, do that sort of you run towards each other and she hits yeah. me and I go into the, the deep box. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the thing is, I actually did that myself. Oh. Okay. Like all wires? Yeah. Like wire work for that? Oh, yeah. Cool. So, is that your first yeah. time doing wire work? Mm, yeah most of the time they won't let you because for insurance reasons mm -hmm. and because the guys or the girls they have people that does that for a living no actors right right but uh i think the, they thought okay this guy maybe he can do it himself 
and I was in I was in pretty good shape. So uh, they let me do two of my my own big stunts there, and that was I'm really happy. It's 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 on it's in the movies, even though my double is a fantastic guy. Um, but uh, actually, well, that's you. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, cool. c'est moi, c'est moi. So it's good. Very cool. I think there's so, a, early in the first fight scene. I think it's you. You go and you punch somebody up, and yeah. the guy jumps off your back and shoots him. Exactly. Yeah. Another kind of a and cool the, moment too. Yeah. We when we came back for some reshoots, uh, just uh, four months after we finished, Jude Law said to me, Rune, I I think the scene we did, uh, the, the the planet is tor tofu tofu. It's been cut, so they cut a lot there. We had a lot of great and mm -hmm. talking of wire work, they did a, some fantastic things there it's amazing what these guys do you know anyway so it was cut down but it was good uh, four and a half hours no how was it? three hours in makeup before uh oh wow you know so <laughs> four o'clock in the morning and yeah having uh, sony studios uh in the morning there and trying to have breakfast while they paint you blue and uh, <laughs> as i as i was bulking up i think i have my uh, omelette uh, name of an omelette uh, name after me at sony now and nina she was uh fetching me another lovely om omelette and she said uh, runa do you want your uh usual omelette the the big ass omelette <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the makeup guy steven said i hope it's more egg than ours <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. And that's, half and half, right? Uh, yeah, half and half, and that's five <laughs> o'clock. And that's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> How'd you go? How would you, <laughs> <laughs> How would you compare being on like a, a Marvel production, a Sony production, compared to um, some of the other work you've done, like The Last Kingdom? And basically, in the end of the day, it's the same kind of work. In front of okay. the camera, you meet some great talent, and you try to have a moment together. Same thing. Cool. But uh, and the sets are amazing, as you know. Oh, yeah, Marvel. Oh, they spend so much money and so much. Uh, the thing that the level of uh, skill all these people involved in the production have is it's it's just mind blowing. It's more than you know you can imagine. They know their stuff yeah. and and they bring it to the, to to work every day. So I think of them uh, every day now when they're in lockdown or whatever. Because there's so oh, many yeah. skillful people, so no, that's that's just amazing. But you know, everything is bigger, bigger budgets, everything, and the kind of acting you have to see, imagine everything. You know, you look up and you see a big war spaceship coming towards you, and <laughs> and you shout and you scream and you you don't Incoming! actually see Incoming! <laughs> ben, ben uh, another great uh, DOP, Ben Davis. Uh, he's done a lot of. Uh, uh, Marvel movies. Great DOP. He said, uh, he's from England. He said, Runa, we need a close up of this bronze shard. It's really something. Yeah. So that's when we have the incoming. <laughs> yeah. It was you great stuff. Way out for that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that all you? Oh, my God. Yeah, that was me. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was, they were so excited. Uh, Heba Thursdottir. She's head of makeup. She's from Iceland. Thurs dotted and she said they are discussing to cut off your beard but uh, i want to keep it so that's um in the end of the day they said let's keep the beard you know so it's my hair and the beard and it's all silver so you silver. know you can, uh, you can imagine how long it took to get it off all that paint you know oh my god but uh no it's good fun i i really love to work with uh, people who know their stuff and uh, to be in such a great story the timing was perfect with brie larson as a first female superhero uh, the timing was great. Um, the Me Too movement was, uh, you know, a lot of things, bad things came to, to the surface. And suddenly you had a, a superhero woman that would be... About time, up. right? About time, you know, why not? There's superhero uh, females all over the world today. So why shouldn't they be top billing in, uh, in the big... Um, big fairy tale stories that we, uh, we mm. tell, uh, tell on, on screen good yeah. stuff yeah totally and, and we're getting a black widow movie next i think so we're gonna oh yeah yeah, yeah. And another after quarantine's yeah. out here Th 30 seconds shot in norway yeah mm. Ooh. oh yeah okay. they moved in. they moved in with everything oh yeah, oh, yeah. 
Well, very secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Smart. Okay. <laughs> Speaking Smart. of the MCU, though, too, uh, <laughs> one thing too, after watching the the Last Kingdom and Vikings and things like that, I've noticed, you know, I've and we've learned more about Viking mythology. Uh, the Thor movies, though, they're all British. They're all all, all yeah, the actors kinda, are exactly. even uh, Chris Hemsworth. He he does like a British accent. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, as an Australian, and uh, now that I, now anytime I watch it, I always just uh, complain to my girlfriend. I'm like, they should all sound like Rune yeah. Tempe. They all sound <laughs> yeah. like... with, with a funny, funny accent. <laughs> they should. <laughs> no, pass me the axe. Something is coming, <laughs> Thor. There's something strange now. Let's go to battle. Get the shield wall going. Oh dear, oh dear, someone hits me over the head. <laughs> but you know, the, the Thor, uh, it's Kenneth Branagh. I mean, he had the idea of doing it. He did the first movie. I'm not sure if uh, his original idea turn, turned out how he, in the end, how, how it was made. Because I'm not sure, because they made it into a big Hollywood uh, concept, right, Thor? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when he was running around in Hollywood, uh, Los Angeles, with the, his script, that that's actually how he wanted it done. But, you know, it's, uh, it's a big, uh, big success. It's a huge franchise, you know. Uh, really? too, bad, too, too bad I, uh, I wasn't asked to audition yeah. for that. That would have been sweet. <laughs> Well, hopefully, so. hopefully, uh, since you were blue as Bron Char, maybe they can yeah. transition you, do a, a whole different character look, maybe in yeah, the next store. You know, in, in, in ten years they're gonna mix everything in the MCU. You know, they're so Kevin Feige, they they're so clever. They have a plan. So totally, you know, they 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 set uh, green lighted number two. So uh, we're just waiting to see if the Star Force is going to be in it. Why so, why not? Why shouldn't the Star Force be in it? Don't ask me. I think it should. Exactly. <laughs> but so you're the that, first. Are you? Is it true you're the first Norwegian in the MCU? Yeah, first Norwegian, second Scandinavian. I think cool. uh, Mats Mikkelsen. He was in uh, um, Doctor Strange. Strange. Yeah. So he was the first one, and uh, then I'm the second one in Scandinavia, and uh, the first Norwegian. Yeah. Awesome. Congrats. Congrats. That's pretty sweet. Thank you. Thank That's you. Pretty sweet. Well, we yeah. always like to um, also ask our guests when they come on about what their favorite things to watch are. Mm, mm, and so mm. is there any, any movies or shows that, that you watched recently or that are favorites of yours? Yeah, this, I mean, we got plenty of time to watch things these days, right? Yes. Totally. So, uh, no, uh, I mean, I was, I was brought up with the European movies and tradition and, I watched a lot when I was younger and uh, we moved over to the American movies. You know, I, I've been brought up with um, Jim Jaramusch, his first movies, Down by Law, all the great uh, David Lynch, uh, all these uh, sort of classic movies. And moving on to some of my favorite actors, of course. I love Clint, Clint Eastwood. I, okay. you know, watching all these great movies Westerns and stuff. Westerns, and then moving on to British movies, one of my favorite actors is Danny Day-Lewis. Oh, yeah. So, picking up on The Last of the Mohegans and That's one of my, my Left the, the, the book of Last Mohegans is my favorite book. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, yes. Great story. Great. So, and then, of course, uh, Gangs of New York, Scorsese's, and, you know, some classic movies, right? Classic. Gangs uh, of New York is sweet. Oh. And uh, talking of uh, writers, you know, Bukowski, the American writer Charles Bukowski, when you were seeing Barfly with uh, Mickey Rourke, Mickey Rourke okay. was still on his, uh, was uh, top of his career, still after nine and a half weeks. Now, these days, I tend to watch a series, um, uh, Mrs. America, the, the Netflix series from Ryan and mm -hmm. Anna. I'm doing that. I'm watching that now. And, um, you know, all the, all the stuff, Breaking Bad and... Do you watch Better Call uh, Saul? Yeah, Better Call Saul is a classic. It's so fantastic. good. Did, yeah. did you see the new season? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, and now we're on, uh, on the American uh, version of, of The Office. We've seen all of oh, that. Yeah. No. yeah, yeah. Some comedy. You love The Office. Yeah, yeah. Have so you been keeping up with The Last Kingdom? The Last Kingdom saw everything. Uh, I haven't seen uh, number four yet. Uh, okay. But, uh, I saw third one. I saw actually... 
in America last year at a Viceroy Hotel in Santa Monica. Yeah, pretty cool. Saw it there um, doing reshoots for Marvel. I had. So, yeah, have you seen any Scandic uh, shows or movies or something? No, I, I have been meaning to watch the, the movie, though, Ragnarok. That's on. Yeah. Netflix, so. The series? The series? The series, I yeah. I don't know if it's a series or if it's a movie, but I've, I've oh. just watched the trailer and I'm like, oh, I need to definitely check that out. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations? Scandinavian ones for us? Yeah, I mean, you have The Bridge, the Danish series, The Bridge. Okay. It's a great series. Yeah, there's a, some cool stuff up here. Cool. I just started watching Norseman, the, the comedy one. Yeah. <laughs> the <seen> Norseman. <laughs> The no wait and show, yeah. I've seen a few episodes of that. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty funny. Cool. <laughs> Did were you a fan of the Marvel universe before you were in? Uh, my son is eighteen now, so we've been seeing all the movies since he was like six or seven. So Sweet. it was good fun. Yeah, it was great to be in uh, to be in it. And are you up to date with all the movies? I try to, but you know, we have 23 now, I think so. It's a yeah. big job. But another great movie, if you haven't seen it, uh, South Korean movie, Parasite. Oh, yeah. Kobe, Kobe's seen that, yeah. I've seen so, it. I saw it in the theaters. Yeah. Um, yeah, you saw it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's come you... up, too. The last few talks we've had, people that we've been bringing up oh, Parasite. Really? It's such a good movie. It's a good movie. It's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, first of all, taking all the Oscars. This is a crazy yeah. thing, I must say. I thought, was, I thought Joker deserved Best Picture, come in my on, opinion. Come on, come on, Joker. It's a it fantastic was movie. Oh. The best movie I've seen in a long time. <laughs> and what, and what an actor. Come on. Mm. Well, at least seen. he won Best Actor. I was, I was very happy for that. He deserved that more than anybody. But it's like, it's like with Parasite. You go in and it's so, I had so high expectations. But, so, you know, the formula <laughs> is quite a standard formula in a way, you know? And I don't know if it lived up. It was a good movie. I don't know if it lived up to my expectations no. because I kind of saw it after the hype. Exactly. And to go in and take all the Oscars, I think, was crazy. You know, why? Why? They could have given the best foreign movie. That's it. You know why? It's, I think they're... I kind of agree. It's not I good. <laughs> I, did, I did like that. But anyway, and then we want to see uh, Mr. Eggers' new movie, The uh, Lighthouse with... Uh, Oh, I didn't see that yet. I've wanted to watch yeah. that. I want to see that. Uh, William Defoe, one of my favorite actors. And uh, Robert Pattinson. Is that a horror yeah. movie? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's in the black and white. Yeah, it's it's like Steve wouldn't like movie. it. Then. I've, I've <laughs> seen, I think I've seen trailers and stuff for it. I'm like, that looks too scary for me. <laughs> so uh, there's some great stuff. We, uh, Good stuff. And I'm in, uh, I'm in another movie coming out now with Christian Wieg and uh, Jim Broadbent uh, and Maggie Smith called uh, a boy called christmas that's yeah. coming out this year yeah very so cool that, yeah 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 it's a family movie it's a movie to be seen great movie so i'm yeah. looking forward to that what else could we expect from you here in the future yeah this is uh, coming out i i'm going to an opening tomorrow it's a, it's oh. a streaming uh, channel up here in norway or scandinavia called via play uh we okay. just did one show called rig 45 and now we're going to yes do, uh, I saw yeah, it's doing another one called The Machinery. So it's coming out just okay. in a couple of days. Uh, and right. a Danish cool. Movie. You play Axel in Rig 45, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's Very all cool. good. Things are awesome. happening. Yeah. That's awesome that you got some stuff that's going to be able to come out kind of during this time, too. Yeah, yeah, I know some actors are kind of caught in between. I'm just uh, talking to a friend of mine now, a uh, um, uh, CEO of. Patriot Pictures, Michael Mendelssohn. He uh, he did Wild at Heart and Fight Club and movies like this. Oh yeah, and they uh, yeah, he's a great guy. And we're working on something. And they because they had movies ready to get out in the theaters, and it can't be done. So it's it's a rough mm. times, you yeah. know. Yeah. So it is. Something good will come. I mean, it's it's terrible to think of all, all the struggle that uh, people have these days, and a lot of sorrow mm. and challenging. But still, they will after the storm they will be calm you know something will yes come. yes and just to try to find the good out of all all this bad stuff that's going on is, is something we all got to try to do too um so as an actor what other goals do you have just to find more challenging work to do more uh like lead work uh, yeah. dragging dragging everything being there in the front you know, like a team player, be the, the leader of the team. So we, cool. yeah, we're looking into that, doing the 
the kind of things I do best, you know, physical things and try to, to develop, to get better every time, to be more relaxed, more more in contact with myself and, and uh, the people I meet in front of the camera and, and enjoy more and not worry so much about what's going on to happening to me tomorrow. But uh, it's always hard for us, but uh, just develop, you know, to move on and give people um, entertainment because that's what I do. I give people stories through all the people I work with and that's, in these days, we notice that we actually have a purpose. We have something that people really appreciate because you can turn on your screen or your mobile and, and we are there to entertain you and suddenly uh, to do more of that. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a great thing to be able to, to give you uh, some uh, entertainment. I did read somewhere that you would be uh, excited to play a Bond villain. And oh, then, yeah. Uh, yeah. when I read that, Ooh. I would, I was pretty pumped. Uh, to, I would really like to see that. You would, you'd play uh, a great Bond villain. I will sink you. I will take you to the hospital where we will <laughs> wait for uh, the professor to maybe look into your eyes to see if Mr. <laughs> Bond is coming to help you. I this is the audition tape. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a German accent. It's perfect. I will tell you. I will bring you the rubles. If you take your Russia. gun. Exactly. I will <laughs> tell Mr. Bond to have something going on when he bolts over. I will kill him. I will kill him and his dog. And I will take his mother outside. And there will be Ragnarok. Okay. <laughs> we, this is the audition tape right here. And... I mean, you should have it. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Rune attempt a next Bond next villain. Bond villain. I have actually I have uh, her name. She's the lead producer. I'm going to write to her right now. Good stuff. <laughs> no, maybe Definitely. not. Maybe not. <laughs> well, we so, hope to see that. So good. Yeah, I hope yeah. to see that for sure. So good. Are you? Uh, what, what are you up to next? Are you? Uh, are you going through the whole cast and crew? Have you got any crew members from the Last Kingdom? Yeah, we've got Sorry? actually. Um, yeah. We got Molly Rose scheduled, who does the costumes. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're super excited. Oh, um, fantastic! Send my regards. I will. What yeah. A, yeah. Oh yeah, my we will. God, what a job she did. <sighs> yeah. Amazing. It's, yeah, a lot of great work from her. We're so trying to get uh, Levente Lejac, uh, oh, yeah. Chaz Bane. We're trying to get Chaz Bane. Too, from the music, we're trying to get her on. Try to get Chess. He'd he's be very the... interesting to talk to about how he approaches those shots. Oh, and my God. He's, he's amazing. Bringing it to life. You feel like Nick, you're there. Nick Mur you know, obviously, the actors are a big part of what will make it happen, but it's way more than that, too. So we want to kind of get into the roots of the show and what happens cool. behind the scenes. Cool. Listen, we can't thank you enough for coming on, uh, Rune. Oh, it's been you. such a pleasure. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, thank you. This has been a great chat with you today, Rune. Do uh, you have anything out there for the fans to, to let them know? Stay tuned to The Lost Kingdom. I'm, uh, I'm really uh, humbled by the uh, dedication of you guys uh, and uh, how you support us all the way. So uh, stay tuned, Arslings, and uh, hopefully <laughs> we'll see you one day in the return of Uba. Yes, that would be great. If you want to see more of Runa, uh, check out his IMDb. Check him out on Instagram. Are you on Twitter as well? Yes. Twitter and Instagram. Twitter. And yeah, Beautiful. that's it. And it just have uh, that in his uh, website link below too. Yeah, yes. and Instagram. We need more followers, guys. Come on. Yes, let's get those followers up. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, if you want more of the Screen Chronicles, check us out on uh Instagram, Facebook, and uh, please subscribe, like, and follow. And we appreciate all the support we've gotten as well. But for now, goodbye from the Screen Chronicles and Aruna Tempest. Thank you for having me, guys. Stay, stay safe. <laughs>